Do you want to hear a true life story about how one investing great flipped a $4 million debt into over $1 billion? Welcome to Habits of the Investing Greats. I'm Ron DeLegge, and you're in the right place. Stick around. On today's episode, I'm going to share with you one habit. I'm going to link that one habit to an investing great, and then I'm going to tell you what to do about it. Remember, if you carefully study and emulate the investing greats, just one habit at a time, I'm confident that you're going to notice a positive difference in your own investing outcomes. Keep in mind, this video series was inspired by my book, Habits of the Investing Greats, which is available at Amazon.com. So in that sense, it's sort of like Hollywood, where the book inspired the movie. In this case, the book inspired this video series, and I felt it was important to bring these videos to you on a weekly basis so as to help you get ahead and stay ahead. So our quote is this, and it's going to set the table for today's conversation. Unstable people breed unstable investment results, said by some guy that I've lived with the past 49 years. Now, one of the goals is to create an environment that fosters consistent profitable investment results. And you can't do that if you're easily spooked or driven by self-destructive tendencies like greed or procrastination or herd mentality. And so today's habit is that of being stable or stability. And I'm going to link this habit to an investing great by the name of Chris Saka. Now, given the massive spike that we've seen in stock market speculation, I think his life story is worth retelling. He flipped $20,000 into $12 million. Just incredible. Uh, he was investing with leveraged or borrowed money. So that was one of the reasons that explains his fantastic mushrooming of his assets. When you invest with borrowed or leveraged money, you get magnified results. And that's what he got. But something else happened because... In the year 2000, after the dot-com crash, he lost everything. And I'm not talking 12 or 20,000 to 12 million, back to 20,000. He went from 20,000 to 12 million to negative $4 million. And so magnified gains worked out to be magnified losses. That's how it works when you're investing with borrowed money. And so this is the situation that Chris Saka found himself in. And he had something recently to say that I think is worth sharing on Twitter all about this, all about his experience with this situation that he went through. And uh, we're going to not use the, the F-bombs here that he's dropping, other than to say that don't trade with money that you don't own. And we want to emphasize that. The other thing I want to emphasize, besides his excellent advice, is that instead of letting this $12 million to negative $4 million crash destabilize his life and his future plans, I think most of us would have a hard time climbing out of that type of black hole, Saka decided that it was time to get a fresh start. And so he moved to Northern California, and he began a career as a lawyer. And he did this at a venerable law firm by the name of Fenwick and West. And after just a year of unemployment, he unfortunately got laid off, but he continued to network. And eventually he landed a job in 2003 at Google, working as their corporate counsel counselor or counsel. Um, although he was still weighed down by this $4 million in debt from these stock market losses, you know, the borrowed money that magnified his losses, he he managed to renegotiate that loan down to $2.1 million, and by 2005, he paid it off completely. Now, rather than letting his past mistakes permanently disable him, Saka kept a firm eye on the road ahead. He said, quote, I want to be investing in the future, not the present. He kept reminding himself of that. And in 2010, he founded a company by the name of Lowercase Capital with the purpose of funding the next generation of great businesses. And so it was through Lowercase that he became an early investor in some of the most revered companies of our generation. Companies like Instagram and Kickstarter, Lookout, Stripe, Twitter, Twilio, and Uber, companies you've never heard of. Well, his track record of success was so great 
that Fortune magazine lab labeled him as, as one of the most successful venture capitalists of all time. There's no doubt that he is right atop of Hall of Fame in terms of all-time venture capital investors, in terms of performance, and just being able to identify the truly great companies and the great uh, entrepreneurs of our era. And this is an unbelievable story that deserves to be retold because those of us that are in a situation where we may have made some missteps, we may have overborrowed or over leveraged, we may be doing things that have gotten ourselves into a deep hole. Well, I don't know if there's any that are in, in currently or in as deep of a hole that Chris Saka has been in, $4 million in debt. Maybe some of you have been in that situation or are in that situation right now. But Saka, again, I think offers us excellent lessons and wonderful inspiration. And so these are the things that, um, that I want to bring to your attention. And the other thing, too, that I really appreciate about him is his, his striving and, and, and driving home the importance of execution. And especially this is a good reminder for us that are entrepreneurs or business people is to follow through on those ideas because the idea is one thing, but execution is everything. And uh, that's a famous quote from uh, Chris Saka. And so what lessons can we learn from today's investing great and from this habit of stability? Well, we need to understand that financial progress is rarely a straight line. It's bumpy. And sometimes we've got to ride those bumps. We need to understand that the setbacks are just part of the process. We're all going to have setbacks. Not every single investment or financial move that we make is necessarily going to work out. And so we need to understand that we're going to have some winners. We're going to have some losers. It's just part of the process. Accept it. Learn from it. And convert those obstacles into money-making opportunities. Make adjustments and relentlessly move ahead. And create financial stability by identifying and fixing problems that may be causing instability in your life or inside your investment portfolio. Get rid of that instability. And then remember, stability in an unstable world, and that's what we live in, a very unstable world, it, it's possible, um, but it begins with you. And so that's an important thing to understand. It starts right here. You and me create that stability. So in summary, be stable and your wallet is going to thank you. Learn from the investing greats like Chris Saka. So if you've enjoyed today's episode, be sure to subscribe to ETF Guide TV. Check out my grading service at PortfolioReportCard.com. Those of you that would like to have me analyze and grade your Roth IRA, your traditional IRA, 401k plan, and other investment accounts, I'll gladly do that. And you can get my book, Habits of the Investing Greats. It's available at Amazon.com. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time. I'm Rhonda Leggy.